everyone. My name is Salo Perez Jr. I'm the admissions counselor recruiter for CSUSB for Cal State San Bernardino. And if, if the rest of the team, please introduce yourself. I'll go next. Uh, my name is Lucia Sarate. I'm lead recruitment coordinator here at Cal State San Bernardino. Hello, my name is Mary Hill, and I'm one of the recruiters at the main campus, Cal State San Bernardino, as well. Hi, everybody. My name is Alyssa. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm an admissions counselor and recruiter at our Palm Desert campus. Hi, everyone. My name is Jasmine Vera, um, admissions counselor and recruiter, also located at the Palm Desert campus. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Melissa Guerra. I'm a uh, admissions counselor here at Cal State San Bernardino as well. Good afternoon. My name is Mark Rogers, and I'm an outreach counselor here at Cal State San Bernardino main campus. And then we also have our housing department here. If you can also introduce yourself. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome. My name is John Merchants. I use he, him pronouns, and I serve as the director for housing and residential education. Good afternoon, everyone. Polly Aller, she, hers, um, and I serve as the associate director for residential education. Thank you, everyone. So in this session, we will go over some steps that may assist you in completing the admissions process. And then we will have the housing department who will speak to you about the on-campus student housing and its opportunities and resources. Uh, please use the Q&A um, button in the bottom of the screen to ask us any questions that you may have about the admissions process. And my team is standing by to assist you and answer any of your questions. First thing I wanna go over with you is for you to make sure you are checking your student email. This is one way in how we inform you, um, inform the students during the application process about certain expectations or to do is required for, me to, for us to complete your application. Many students rely on the personal email. Um, Did we lose Sal? Yeah, it looks like we're having some difficult, um, um, some technical difficulties. So if you guys could just hang on tight for a few minutes. Is he strike to side on right now? My apologies, everyone. I did get kicked out, but let me start by sharing my screen. Okay, so let's continue. So where I left off is it's important for students to check their email. This is the place where we inform students about the application process and to do to do's that are required from the students and expectations that are required from the students in order for you to complete your application. So this may consist of some items like uh, requesting some documents from you that we use to evaluate you in order for us to make sure you are eligible for admissions. So, um, and or, uh, one way for you to check your student email is through your MyQuity account. And so you'll be able to find an icon on your uh, student portal that reads student email. So it looks just like a Gmail icon. Again, you'll be able to locate it on your MyQuity account when you log in. 
And then I do advise to, for students to check their email at least once a week. So at least this gives you some time for you to commit to the deadlines because there is some deadlines that is required for some of our to-do items. And another way is how we communicate with students is through your to-do list. This is where we provide you a list of items required from you to complete by a certain deadline so you can complete your application. You can find, um, you can find the to-do list, again, in your My Coyote portal under My Tasks. So you're looking for the icon, My Tasks. Then you will click My To-Dos. So you're, you're clicking the My To-Dos icon after My Tasks. This will provide you a list that's similar to this. Um, if the item is requested, then we will show as initiated, meaning it has not been completed yet, so it's been initiated. Once we have processed the item, then it will take, then it will show as complete instead of initiated. Give us some time for us to process certain documents, like for example, so if we require transcripts, it will take us roughly two weeks uh, for us to complete this item. If it still doesn't show as complete after like two or three weeks after you submit it, a document like your transcripts, feel free to contact our department and my team will provide you the contact information in the chat. By the way, we have requested from most of our students um, their, the official partial transcripts. So if you have not submitted those transcripts, please submit those as soon as possible. We are still making decisions. But if you have received or, or if you will receive an offer of admissions and you would like to attend Cal State San Bernardino, please inform us by accepting your offer of admissions or you can just decline it. This will let us know um, what students we will move forward with the application process. So after you accept your uh, admissions, the orientation department, for example, will get in contact uh, with you to register for orientation. To accept or decline your offer of admissions, log into your MyCurity account. Then you will select the My Tasks icon where you found the to-do list on your student portal. Then you will select Accept Decline Admissions. Then you will click the, uh, the button accept decline your admissions offer. And all applicants can see this link, um, but only admitted students will be able to proceed. So if you received an offer of admissions, you will be able to proceed um, um, with, uh, by clicking this button. So you will click next, but make sure you do turn off your pop-up blockers or you will not be able to continue to the next page. And this is where you decline or accept your offer of admissions. Once you complete this step, just know that the link on this page will no longer be active. And then if you accept, then you would just need to confirm. So you'll just see that button there, confirm acceptance. Some students might may have received a denied decision. And currently we are, we are still offering decisions. So some students are receiving a denied decision. So you do have the option to appeal. This gives you the opportunity to be reconsidered. So that's where we will look at your application once again and any additional documents that were not provided initially when you submit the application. Students who can appeal are students who believe they are eligible um, but, but for example, has credit that was not considered during the initial review of your application. So um, that may be courses that you did not provide for us in your application, or maybe you just recently added some courses that are required for admissions. Um, maybe you just made a mistake on your application. It does occur, especially if students did apply at the end and they were rushing um, and putting their courses within their application. Or you may have applied to an impacted major, uh, which does have higher standards to 
be met in order for you to be eligible. And so since you didn't meet those standards, but you met the minimum requirements for other majors, you can ask to be pre-considered for a non-impacted major. Or you just want to be considered for any special extenuating circumstances. So this is where you could give us any reasons of why you should be reconsidered. So anybody can appeal. Students who can appeal are, and, and this is where you have a higher chance to be accepted under your appeal, are, um, it is, so again, it's pretty much anyone. Uh, but it's it's really for those students who have a denied decision. So we won't, cons uh, so if you believe now, oh, you know what, I'm going to be denied. I already know that I'm going to be denied because I'm missing some courses or things have changed. You won't be able to appeal until you actually receive the denied decision. So just keep that in mind. And so those students who have been denied are those students that just did not meet the admissions criteria. So for high school students, that might be that you didn't complete the, any of the A3G, you might be missing one of the A3G courses, your GPA is just too low. Um, same thing for transfer students. There are some specific courses that we ask from all students in order for them to be eligible, the four basic skills. Maybe you did not com uh, complete a course. Uh, we do ask for C or minus or better for some of these courses. You might've received a D. Um, so these students are allowed to appeal again after they received a denied decision. If if you are if you are appealing, just keep in mind that you only have the option to appeal once. So if you appeal right now um, for a class that um, was not reported on your application, and then later on that class you end up getting like uh, a below C. Maybe it's a course that we require under the A through Gs. Maybe you're a transfer student and it's one of the four basic skills. Unfortunately, we will not look at that appeal since we only will review your first attempt. So make sure you do meet the admissions requirements by the end of spring term. Um, if there's anything that you would like to discuss, um, also stay in, in, in touch with us, get in contact with us, contact our office. We do set up appointments with students so we could discuss your situation, or if not, we will have you appeal. So what we need from you to appeal is additional documents needed to support your appeal. So for an example, it could be your most up-to-date transcripts, your AP scores that you provide um, that will provide you college credit. Um, make sure you do submit them to our office prior to submitting your appeal request. So we have something to look at when we're, when we're reading your appeal. And complete appeals, which include supporting documents, will be automatically denied. So again, make sure you do, you do provide for us supporting documents that we need in order for us to reconsider your application. You have 15 business days to submit your appeal from the day that you receive your denied letter. So keep checking your emails. Again, that's why we suggest that you check your emails at least once a week. And then you can use this QR code to view the appeal form. So you, uh, the appeal form is available on our website. Um, you could scan this QR code to visit the appeal form. If you have received a denied decision, do that as soon as possible, at least within 15 business days from the day you receive your denied letter. These are some important dates um, for some to-do list items that you might have received. Some have already passed, but I do want to mention for those that submitting that submitted the FAFSA or Dream Act application, um, the financial department has begun distributing financial uh, financial aid award letters. If you have any questions about your letter, please get in contact with that department. They'll be able to let you know um, the process of their letters. And if there's, if you have any questions, they're the specialists, they're the people to ask. May 1st is the deadline for you to accept your offer of admissions. June 5th is the income is the incoming high school students orientation and registration deadline. July 15th is the deadline for transfer students. 
orientation is the day where we help you register for classes. We give you, they give you a tour of the campus and they inform you of the services that are provided for you within Cal State San Bernardino. And then July 17th is the deadline for final official transcripts. We do have some upcoming events that you might be interested in. We are sending you an email inviting you to these events. Uh, for example, we do have how at AYOTI, and this is where you will hear from the student panel um, from our current students. We also will provide you a tour. There will be some games uh, for you to enjoy. So make sure you do register. It will be a, a, a day with um, that gives you the opportunity to look at the campus, meet our current students, ask us any questions, ask us questions about the application process as well. And this, it's for the most part, it's just going to be a fun day. If you want to stay connected, check out our website by scanning this QR code. This is where we provide for you um, the recordings. So we do provide, we do record these sessions and we do post it on our website. So if you want to visit it later, and this is also where we provide for you the events that you can register for. And uh, we do have our contact information there. And if you want to schedule an appointment with any of us, any uh, um, you can make an appointment within our website. If you have any questions, you can contact our department by email or just give us a call, or you can just drop a question in the Q&A. Um, uh, and you can also follow us on social media. We do tend to provide updates and announcements for students there about the application process, about admissions, and also about the university. And so uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, we are going to provide some time at the end of this session to answer any more questions for you. But now I'm going to pass it on to the housing department. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sal. Um, again, welcome, everybody. My name is John Merchants, and uh, I'm going to pull up a, a share screen here um, with some information about housing. And I'm going to have my colleagues, um, Holly and Sof Sophie, introduce themselves again for you all. And hi, everyone. My name is Holly Aller. I'm Associate Director for Residential Education. So I work with our live-in staff and our student leaders who um, kind of create a safe and fun environment for you if you, live, if you choose to live on campus. Hi, my name is Sophie. Um, I'm a first year at Cal State San Bernardino. And, um, I major in communication studies and I live in Coyote Village. So um, we have some information that we wanna share with you all about living on campus and uh, what the Department of Housing and educa Residential Education has to offer. Um, so first of all, welcome um, to the Coyote family. We're excited that you're thinking about living on campus and being a part of the CSUSB family. Um, things just we that we like to share with folks about living on campus is that students who choose to live on campus typically do better in school. Um, they have higher GPAs and they graduate at a faster rate than those who commute or who don't live on campus. Um, folks who live on campus typically get more support. Um, they have access to resources right here on campus. Um, they don't have to travel very far to get to the library or to a tutoring session um, or to faculty office hours. So the support that folks get on campus is, is pretty tremendous. Additionally, um, folks who live on campus typically are making lifelong friends, whether that be through their roommates or through their participation in on-campus activities and events. Um, making connections with people is something that folks who live on campus uh, really experience and value as part of the on-campus community. And then last but not least, um, if you live on campus, you're close to everything. You don't have to worry about commutes. You don't have to worry about rising gas prices. Um, everything is right here within walking distance. And so we really encourage people um, to acknowledge and to be a part of the community because everything is right here at your fingertips from the dining hall to our athletic facilities to the classroom spaces. So just to share a little bit about our options on campus that are available, if you are an incoming freshman student, Coyote Village is our tr traditional style village. Um, so that means we have double rooms and then shared community restrooms. 
um, living room study spaces, a community kitchen, and so a game room and some other social spaces in the community. And this is again, only open for first year students. Um, students do not have a kitchen in their room area, so they are required to have a meal plan, but the dining hall is right next door to Coyote Village, so it's very close and nearby. Um, and then again, this setup kind of creates an environment where students have easier access to pop in and visit each other within their floor um, and connect uh, with other students in their in their village community. And we'll have later on, we'll have Sophie share a little bit more about her experience in Coyote Village. If you are uh, transferring in, we have two apartment communities, Arrowhead Village and University Village. Um, again, this is for our returning, so continuing students and any transfer students as well. Um, we have a number of apartment types, but typically there's two to four students per apartment. Um, everyone has an individual bedroom and then the bathroom. Um, usually there's a shared bathroom between two of the students in that community and then shared living room and kitchen spaces. So again, some private space in the apartment, but also some shared spaces. Students in our apartment areas, again, have kitchens. They're not required to have a meal plan, but there is a range of voluntary meal plans um, that are open to students if they want the, um, the ease of being able to pop into the dining hall or eat at one of the locations across campus. Um, so Airhead Village is um, on the same side of the street with the kind of with the main campus right near Coyote Village, and, and University Village is just across the street from the campus, so very brief, short walk um, on our campus to University Village. So right now we are encouraging folks to take virtual tours of our housing facilities. If you go to our webpage, you'll be able to see the, the virtual housing tours option. Um, our hope is that as we approach summer and summer orientation, um, we'll be able to provide folks with tours. Um, our buildings are really full this, this spring. And so we don't have a lot of opportunity to show actual spaces. Um, so we're encouraging folks to do the online tours um, take that virtual tour of Cowdy Village if you're a first year student coming in, or if you're a transfer student looking at Arrowhead Village or University Village um, to get a look and feel for what our facilities look like, what rooms look like, what apartment spaces look like. Um, and again, our hope is that this summer we'll be able to offer in person tours um, who, for folks who are looking at actually seeing spaces within our residential halls. So I'll share all of our residents who live on campus have access to some really great resources um, and community building, which we'll talk about in a bit. But one thing we offer that's unique is living learning communities. So if you wanna live on campus, but maybe you have a specific either program, um, educational program, or if you wanna connect for folks around the same identity, we do have some extra um, opportunities in our learning communities that really enhance that experience that you can have on campus. So for next year, um, we're offering these following living learning communities um, Be Well Yote, so that focuses on general wellness, kind of different facets of wellness for, for folks on our campus. Um, Black residential scholars, our Latinx residential scholars, um, our LGBTQIA plus learning community, residential honors scholars, which you have to be part of the campus honors program in order to be part of that residential honors scholars. Um, for upper division students, specifically, we have our transfer living learning community for folks who either are newly transferring or have been a transfer student to kind of help create some community for transfer students. Um, upstarters, which is entrepreneurship, which is also an upper division um, LLC, and then women in science and engineering. So all of our LLCs have first year student and continuing or transfer student opportunities with the exception of the transfer LLC is really only open to either transfers in or folks who have been transfers and then upstarters, which is again, only open to our upper division students as well. So these are great opportunities. Um, we have community and campus partners who engage with students within here. We have some faculty members who do. We have specialized programming and events that students do. Um, so for example, um, our Black Residential Scholars did a special screening, um, special movie screening this fall. Um, we had our LGBT learning community uh, go out to um, Palm Springs and go to Palm Springs Pride and learn about the history of the LGBT community in Palm Springs. Um, so we've had some variety of different kind of cool events and opportunities that enhance that experience for students and help build community, again, either around um, shared identity that you're interested in connecting over um, or around some academic programs as well for folks. So if you are interested, you would submit that interest within your housing application. And these are limited communities. Uh, so I would just say that if you're interested, at, apply early, add that in early, um, because we have some limited spaces. I know Sophie, Sophie's in our Latinx um, LLC. I wondered if you want to maybe share a little bit, Sophie, about your experience. 
Yeah, so I live in the Latinx Residential Scholars Hall in Running Springs. Um, I say it's very, it's nice um, because it's kind of like a home away from home. I'm living with people who um, are also Latinx just like I. And in the first semester, we had a lot of events um, catered to things um, that were very important in um, the Latinx community, such as we did something for uh, Dia de los Muertos, um, as well as I remember my RA did an event where he got all of our residents or got all of his residents from his hall. And we made tacos together and talked about uh, Latinx traditions. So I definitely recommend um, if you're first year to pick a living learning community to live in because it brings a sense of community. Great, thanks Sophie. So yeah, if you're interested and you wanna learn more, our website has some more information as well um, for all of our students. So there's a lot of opportunities to engage. So we have programs and events. We've got some pictures here of some of our events for students. We do a, a whole variety. So your individual floor or wing has some smaller scale events to get to know people right around you in your community. We also have some very large scale events open to either your whole village or the entire um, residential population. Um, we do a housing week of welcome. It's a lot of fun where we do some bigger events. All these events are free. They're included as, as you know, part of your experience within housing. Um, so again, we really encourage people to come out and engage. And lots of people meet their uh, maybe you know first friends or make connections at these at these types of events. Um, we also have a student government organization. So if you've heard of ASI, it's similar to ASI, but housing specific, representing housing residents. Um, that's RHA. Um, they enhance the experience of residents through programs, through advocating for student needs and leadership development. And they provide a range of opportunities. So they put on programming for all students. Um, you would have an opportunity to be a part of a village council if you would like. So if you're looking for kind of an introductory leadership experience, a chance to help create some events for other students or just do leadership development yourself. We do a lot of activities and, and um, meeting opportunities for students to build their own skills. Um, that's something that's an option through Village Council, through RHA, those elections would be in the fall. So again, we host a whole range of opportunities for folks to engage. And um, we also have different staffing in the community. So we have resident assistants who help um, again, create some of these events, but also our support for students as you're navigating just being a university student or if you're having you know, a roommate issue or you have a big life challenge, you can help connect to resources and be a support. And we have academic mentors as well, who specifically are students who have been very successful academically at the university. Um, so they have office hours and academic specific programs and help do some outreach. So if you're struggling academically, we also have folks living in the halls with you who can be a great resource to help um, connect and help troubleshoot um, to support your success as a student. So those are a few pieces of how you can have engagement at both leadership, but also just programs and events in the community. And I do want to uh, hand off to Sophie and see if you're willing to talk a little bit about um, your engagement, whether it's programs or just in Coyote Village in general as a student. Yeah, so um, the way that I got engaged on campus as a student who lives in Coyote Village, um, I went to a lot of the programs and events that they had in the first half of the semester, um, only because I wish I could go to some of the events this semester, but I am a, stu a student who's employed in housing, so most of my time is being taken up with housing. <laughs> um, but I was able to make friends very quickly in the first half um, because when I did first move in and um, started going here I was very scared that I wasn't going to be able to make any friends um, but that fear was like quickly shut down when I went to the welcome week and all these welcome programs that they had. Um, I also went to them with my roommate so my roommate and I were able to create a friendship really quickly um, and I'm also pretty close friends with a lot of people in my hall and we do a lot of these events together. So um, I encourage students to engage in these programs and to go out to these events because um, I know looking at it, sometimes people look at it and are like, well, I don't wanna waste my time on that. Um, but it's definitely worth it because you can make lifelong friends through these events. Thank you, Sophie. So one of the other things we like to share uh, is a little bit about the meal plans available on campus. So if you are a first year student 
and you will be living in County Village. Um, there is a mandatory meal plan associated with living um, in County Village. Uh, so you'll be able to go to the Yodi Eats webpage and look at the meal plan options um, that are available for the 23-24 academic year. If you're a transfer student or a continuing student and you're living in one of our apartments, um, you can select a voluntary meal plan. Um, and meal plans have a variety of different functions. Um, they can be used in the dining hall, uh, the commons, the all you care to eat uh, venue. There are also retail and um, restaurants on campus where you might be able to use your dining dollars. Uh, so we do encourage you to take a look at the meal plans. Um, even if you're not living in County Village, uh, it's great for folks to consider. Um, one of the questions that has come up is about the kitchens. So there is a community kitchen in County Village for first year students. So um, it's a big kitchen where people can share space. Uh, there's um, a, a stove and an oven, microwave, refrigerator. Uh, so people can choose to bring pots and pans or other cooking materials. They want to cook their own food on occasion. Um, but first year students who live in County Village do have a mandatory meal plan. Um, and those who live in our apartments can opt into a voluntary plan if they desire to do so. Uh, the other thing that we like to share um, is just what does the housing fees include? So um, if you are living off campus, if you're living in an apartment, you would have to set up your own um, gas or your own electricity bills. Uh, you'd have to contact an internet service provider. Um, all of this is included in our housing fees. So you don't have to worry about paying or setting up bills for electricity and gas, water and sewer, um, trash removal, uh, Wi-Fi access, and all of our apartments and uh, County Village residence hall rooms come with standard furniture. So um, a bed, a desk, um, things like that are provided in the space. So you don't have to worry about bringing those types of things or purchasing additional um, pieces of furniture because those are included in the residence halls. What your housing fees don't include would be um, washer and dryer uh, usage. So there's a dollar per wash, 75 cents per dry. Um, if you have a car and you want to have a parking permit on campus, those are per purchased through parking and transportation services. And then the meal plan, um, whether it be a voluntary or a mandatory meal plan, those are not um, costs that are included in your housing fees. All right, so just a little bit about applying for housing or application. Again, it's open right now. It's been open since February 1st. Um, we really encourage you, if you're interested in living on campus, to apply early uh, to be considered for early application rate. If you apply by 11.59 p.m. on Monday, May 1st, um, you would receive that early application rate, which is the equivalent to a discount of about a month uh, of free rent. So it's a pretty significant discount and worth it. Um, you would have to, again, apply by that May 1st and also submit your $100 prepayment and acknowledge the housing license agreement by the designated date that you are provided after you apply. So again, we encourage you to apply today. Applying at this point doesn't lock you in, but it gives you that option to live on campus um, because our housing assignments are made based on the, the submission date for application, first come, first serve, and the space availability that we have on campus. So again, really encourage you all to apply early um, to, to live on campus with us. So paying for on-campus housing, a few things that can have come up over time that we feel like are helpful to answer for you kind of all front. So how do housing charges work, right? So we work with student financial services. Your housing charges would post to your student account. Your fall rent gets placed in August, and then your uh, spring rent gets placed in December. So it's not an outside payment that you have to figure out how to pay. Um, it goes straight through your student account through student financial services. Um, the due date is the same date as the tuition due date, so it kind of keeps that easy. Um, and you can work with student financial services if you would like to do an installment payment plan. There is no separate special payment plan for housing. It is that payment plan that is available through student financial services. Um, just some tips about financial aid as it relates to housing. When you get financial aid, it gets applied to your tuition first. So you don't get to kind of parse out and choose, oh, I'd like this part to go to housing or this part to tuition. It's always just going to be placed onto tuition first. And after tuition is paid, your balance will be applied to other charges, such as your on-campus housing charges. There's not a guarantee that your aid will cover outside costs that you have, such as housing. So we really encourage you as you're you know, being admitted and receiving your financial aid award offer letter, take a look at that, see what that total is, look at kind of your bill. And if you have questions about what your aid covers, um, 
please speak with a financial aid advisor. I'd also just encourage in general, if you're wanting to live on campus, having that conversation and saying, I'd like to live on campus, how can my aid apply? What does this look like? You know, given my particular circumstances, did that change my award at all? It's always good to feel like you have a, a, a handle on what your aid means, what that can be applied for. That'll set you up for success, um, whether you choose to live on campus or not. The last plug we'd like to say is we'd really like to encourage you to work on campus. There's a ton of jobs for students. Um, we have jobs in our department. Lots of other departments have jobs. The great thing is working on campus um, and it keeps you close to the action of things. You get to build you know, relationships and mentorships with, with faculty and staff on campus. We also have a better understanding of kind of the flow of the year, right? So um, there's a lot of great benefits um, and you should check to see if you are eligible for federal work study. There are jobs um, that may only be open to work study students or you may have some priority for positions if you're eligible for work study. So look at your award offer and see if work study is listed on there. And again, even if it's not, make contact with financial aid and ask, hey, would I be eligible for a work study, a federal work study? Sophie, do you want to share a little bit about working on campus and the benefits that you've experienced working on campus? Of course. Um, so I work here um, with Department of Housing as a student housing assistant. Um, basically, um, I work up in the front. I answer phone calls and help students with any questions that they have regarding housing, um, as well as um, I get like a kind of like an inside sneak peek to like events that we're having throughout the weeks for each village. So for Coyote Village, Arrowhead Village, and University Village. Um, I also work in the mail room. So that's connected with housing. And um, I basically log packages that we get from USPS, FedEx, UPS, Amazon, all that stuff, um, which we only keep mail for residents. So residents can come and pick up their packages here if they get it delivered here. Um, and yeah, I would say my experience working on campus has been pretty great. Thanks, Sophie. Um, so our application for 2324 uh, is, is available now. It actually opened on February 1st, uh, 2023. And if you have um, your My Coyote credentials, so your um, ID number um, at csusb.edu and a way to log in to email, you are able to access our housing portal um, to be able to apply for on-campus housing for 2324. Um, so if you take a peek at this slide here, um, this is our housing and residential education homepage. And in the corner, there's a button that says housing portal. You'll want to click on that, and then it'll direct you to log in using your My Coyote credentials. And then once you log in, um, you'll be able to access the 2324 application. And then um, from there, you'll just hit the continue button, and uh, you'll be able to be navigated through the application process. Um, so again, this application has been open since February 1st, and you just need your, your credentials. Um, to be able to access the application and apply for this upcoming fall. Um, information on our webpage also includes the timeline. So right now, um, the application is open. It's available to folks who are uh, able to apply. Um, and then from March 8th to May 1st, first year student housing confirmation email. So if you've applied for housing, you're going to get an email from us saying, yes, you have a space. Um, our spaces are limited. So we encourage people to apply early. And then once we are full and no longer have beds available, um, we'll let folks know that they are added to a waiting list. Um, if you are a transfer student, um, again, the application is open to you currently. Um, starting on March 8th, you're able to go into the housing portal and start looking for apartment mates or to form groups. And our apartment room selection for transfer students and continuing students begins on April 5th. Um, so in just a couple of weeks. Uh, as Holly mentioned, we have an early application rate and that expires on May 1st um, at 11.59 um, p.m. Pacific Standard Time. 
And uh, May 3rd through May 30th is when first year students um, can go into the housing portal and look for potential roommates. Um, when you apply for housing, there's a roommate compatibility questionnaire that you will fill out. And um, beginning on May 3rd, you'll be able to go into the housing portal and review potential roommates for living in County Village. Um, and there's a process uh, that's outlined on our webpage on how you can select those roommates. Um, and it's all through our housing portal, so it's a very seamless, easy process to follow. Starting on May 31st, um, we will then be sending folks room assignments for Caddy Village and uh, their roommates. So um, at the end of May, uh, you'll know where your assignment is and who your roommate is um, based on your choice. Or if you're uncertain and you don't really care, um, we have a matching feature within the housing application that will allow you to match with um, somebody you're compatible with. Um, and then August 20th through 22nd is our move-in dates. So um, we'll go through the whole summer and work with folks on securing housing, um, but our timeline is listed on our webpage, and um, it's important for folks to read the webpage and the information that we have posted online get into the housing portal, um, kind of navigate that. And then if you have any questions or if you're unsure about your application status, um, you can always reach out to our office and our staff will help you um, with regards to navigating the application process. Um, a couple other things to note is that assignments are made based on application submission date and space availability. So again, our application has been open since February 1st. Um, if you're uncertain about housing and you're not sure, um, we encourage people to apply early um, because if you wait until August, there's a good chance um, we won't have any space available for you um, if you want to live on campus. Uh, so again, application submission date and space availability are really critical in terms of your application submission. Once you are um, confirmed the space, uh, you'll be sent an email, a housing license agreement, um, so a, a lease or a contract, if you will, um, that you will agree to the terms. And our housing license agreement is for the full academic year. So it starts with move in in August, and it goes all the way to move out, which is in May of 2024. Um, that also includes the winter break. So people who live on campus have the ability to live on campus the duration of their time um, during the academic year. So from, from August until May, you could live in your space the entire time. Um, we don't close for uh, the winter break or for other holidays. Um, you will be able to access your space uh, continuously. Um, folks who are locked into a, a room um, also have to pay a $100 non-refundable housing prepayment. Um, so that just guarantees that you're committed to the space and to living on campus. And that prepayment um, goes actually to your fall housing balance. So um, it's nothing that housing is making money off of. It's just a way for you to secure your room. And if you don't complete your license agreement or submit your um, non-refundable prepayments um, by the date given to you in the communication that you'll receive from housing, uh, then we can um, offer those spaces to other folks and cancel your application. So it's really important as has been shared in this presentation and before that you're checking your on-campus, rather your county email. Um, you'll get lots of messages from, from DHRE in terms of where you're at in the application process. Uh, so we encourage you to add housing at csusb.edu to your contacts um, to ensure that those emails aren't going to spam. A couple other things, we'll be at the Choose CSUSB Day on Saturday. Um, we'll have several sessions during orientation over the summer. Uh, and our webpage, we have lots and lots of information um, about every aspect of housing you can imagine, um, from tours, virtual tours, to payment schedules, to important dates. So we really encourage people to look at our webpage uh, to find helpful information if they're considering living on campus um, for this upcoming school year.
Um, last but not least, again, this is our contact information. So our website, um, csusb.edu backslash housing. Um, we have our housing at csusb.edu email. And um, we are on social media. Um, our social media is not as robust as we want it to be quite yet. Um, but we do have a Facebook, uh, Twitter, and Instagram page. Um, but the best way to reach us right now is, is via our webpage and via our email, because um, we'll be able to individually answer your questions or address any of the, the, the things that you're curious about in regards to living on campus for this upcoming school year. I will maybe just quick before we jump to questions, hand back um, to Sophie and just see if you have advice for folks who are thinking about living on campus or want to live on campus. Sophie, thinking about kind of what you've learned this year, what's something you'd share with our, our incoming students? Yeah, so if you're an incoming uh, first year and you're wondering if you should live on campus or if you should commute, um, I definitely recommend living on campus. Um, as somebody in high school who struggled with making friends, um that was like my biggest fear uh coming to CSUSB oh I'm not going to be able to make friends I'm probably not going to click with people very easily but that like completely changed like the first three days of living here all those welcome events I was able to make friends very quickly um I became best friends with my roommate I didn't expect the, uh, us to click very well but it seems like I have known her my whole life um not only that um I do agree that I think if you do live on campus, you do well academically. Um, I, the first semester, um, I made it onto the Dean's list and I didn't expect that for myself, um, but I am very proud of myself for that. And I do think living on campus um, played a big part in that because I was near all my classes and I was also in reach of so much help, such as tutors and, um, other students who may have been taking the classes as me. Um, so if you're very stuck on the decision right now of, oh, should I dorm? Should I live on campus? I say go for it and do it. It's so fun. Um, you get a sense of individuality and you get to figure out who you are as a person. And there's a lot of self-growth and um, a lot of different ways to make friends.